So, we have these seven kingdoms, and uh, even in the advanced of magnetism, you will learn how to spot people uh, that belong to the different kingdoms. This, now, don't get the idea that we're putting down anyone. We're not putting down humanity at all. But we're dealing with observable facts. We're not dealing with theories. Uh, Mr. Webster Edgerly, who wrote most of this material at the turn of the century, didn't like theories. He didn't like uh, ideas, or he just wanted to work with observable, observable facts. And if you got out into the world and open your eyes, you will see that what is on this course is true. Not because we say it is, but because you will be out there observing these things. And if it's true for you, then it's true for you. Now, where was I? Okay, let's come back to the way I came to the United States. And I went through the schools, the usual uh, junior high and high school. I was in music and I liked physical culture and nature. And so I followed music and did quite well for many years. I started off as a bassoonist. And boy, let me tell you, in the music business, there is a lot of negativity. Uh, to be an artist today, it's like being a martyr. There is not enough financial reward in it. And man, if you are in music or in the arts, man, you really have to love it because Oh, wow. When we get 90% in the high human kingdom, yes, then aesthetics will be all around. I, I used to say that a simple thing to do to uh, cut the, the crime rate down was simply to erect statues. Have all the sculptors make statues and put them all over the cities, grow trees everywhere, put beauty all around. Don't you see society and humanity, we... You know, life is such a short span of consciousness, and we're chasing after nothing, bickering and fighting. It's so silly. It's so stupid. And people are stuck in offices from 9 to 5 to make their little money so they can keep this body growing. And the purpose of the body is to allow a physical vehicle to improve the inner self. That's all life is for. I discovered in studying these things that the purpose of life is to change and improve. That's the main command, change and improve. Now, unfortunately, we need a body to do that with. What are we changing? Are we changing the body? Not very much. We're changing ourselves, the inner selves. We're changing the mind. We're changing the emotions. We're changing the inner self, all of the things that have to do with inner growth. Now, unfortunately, we need a body to do that. So we have to take care of that body. We, naturally, we have to feed it. But the purpose of life certainly is not to get a job, a job, job, anything, to just to feed this body and not care for, for the purpose of the body. So we live with all of these crazy ways of life. For example, here I am sitting at the beach. It's so beautiful and so quiet. It costs nothing. Uh, yet, you know, the greatest things in life are free. People are rushing around trying to feed that body and forgetting all about the inner self. Well, I'll tell you right now, you start concentrating on that inner self. You start developing yourself. You start changing your personality into a powerhouse of, of good things and money and all of these things and shelter and everything will come to you. Another thing that people on the middle path, that 70% that's in the middle of the human kingdom, one thing that they worry about so much is health. Health and sex. Oh, they worry about it. They want it so badly. And they do nothing about it. They can't confront it. They can't confront health. They can't confront sex. It's ridiculous. They have no idea of the differences between love and sex. They have no, they listen to every book, every seminar, everything that comes out about diet fads. Man, you get yourself a purpose and you get out there and you do something with that purpose. 
something that you believe in, and you never have to worry about losing weight. You never have to worry about what you eat. You will autom- Your body will tell you what to eat. You listen to your body. You listen to your intuition. So, was in music, did very well, had many friends. Then, I injured my right hand. I couldn't play the classical guitar anymore. I, I became a classical guitarist. I was performing all around. I was doing quite well. I had a studio and store in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I lost the motion of my hand. It was a freak accident. One night when I was playing, pulled several ligaments or a couple of ligaments, and, and I was confronted with the fact that I probably would never be able to play again. So I said to myself, well, I turned a negative thing into a positive thing, even though I was very depressed for a long time because of it, because my musical tongue, as it were, was cut off. So I decided, well, I'm going to experiment with some of the things that I've always believed in, but didn't have a chance to experience. I wanted to experience getting away from everything. I wanted to experience beginning a new life. So I went to Florida, and I lived in Florida for seven months in a section of an abandoned house and lived here quite alone. Didn't see anybody except for a couple hours or two, three hours a day that I went to the music studio to give a few lessons in order to keep my body alive. So I spent seven months in this self-exile, and I really learned that you need very, very little little to live happy. You really don't need very much. Now, don't misunderstand me. That does not mean that those of you who want to be wealthy and who want to get ahead in life uh, financially, that's fine. You should have. In fact, one of the purposes of uh, personal magnetism, I guess it's the number, yes, number four purpose is to be financial, to have financial self-sufficiency. There's nothing wrong with this as long as you don't forget why you're getting this wealth. Wealth, to me, is enjoying the good things of life, the, the true values. But anyway, we'll get back to this in a minute. So in this exile, I realized that life, life was very, very simple. And the only difficult part about life is having to live in a society or surrounded by beings that make everything so difficult. And if you want to get ahead, if you want to be a magnetic personality, you have to be so powerful and so strong in every department of life, including the financial, that you can cut through all of this negativity and be supreme and be powerful and be ahead of the whole thing. And you can do all this without breaking any laws. You can do all of this without hurting anybody. On the contrary, you get to this place faster by helping people. Again, we'll get back to that in a few minutes. So after my seven-month exile, I always wanted to come to California. So I came to California. I'm sitting right now on the seashore in Malibu, California, very beautiful place. And oh, yes, I forgot the most important thing. Several years before I went on my exile, My brother had given me a book, a very old, musty book, written by a man named Webster Edgerly. Now, I read this book and thought that the author was a genius. Then I read it some more and thought the author was nuts. I thought he was really crazy. And then I put the book aside, but there was something in that book that kept me coming back to it more and more all the time. And so I would go through periods of thinking the author was a genius and periods of thinking the author was mad. Nevertheless, I started doing some research on this man and found out that he had manuscripts written and they were spread around. They were very difficult to find. I was lucky enough to know a great psychic painter by the name of Herman de Giovanno who actually served as one of my gurus when I was young. And 